you have a kiss, Dixie? So we're friends now. What about the fact that I'm still in? Friends. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. The armed response officer who shot you there. Not recommending disciplinary action. Well, I want a name. Man who pulled the trigger. And have you had a chance to look at the dates? For? My MCAM. I'm definitely keen to just get cracking as soon as possible. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Look, I could show you this basal technique. I've seen it done lots of times before. You're here to be mentored by me, not the other way around. As long as I can remember, I have always wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help people. Being able to leave at the end of the day knowing you've made a difference, who wouldn't want that? In med school, there's all this talk about the team around you. The firm. <laughs> oh, I like that. The firm. But what they never tell you is that these people, your colleagues, they become your friends. They become your family. Walking into work each day, never knowing what might happen, who you'd be helping, who you'd be saving. I had never felt happier. Morning. Mrs. Beecham wants to see you. Oh, right, anything wrong? How would I know? She's upstairs in the meeting room. But that's the trouble with happiness. It's fleeting. Just like life. <laughs> Blink and it's gone. Oh, come on. A couple of drinks. She was practically in tears on the phone to me last night. It's never just a couple of drinks, though, is it? Yeah, right, come here. <laughs> Morning. All right? Yeah, good, yeah? Yeah, great. Brilliant, really, really good. Uh, we're just organising some drinks for Alicia. Lily's being a bit... She's being a witch, making her life hell. Yeah, when Alicia arrived, she was like Taylor Swift, and now Lily's turned her into Britney circa 2007. The bald years. Oh, I won't have a bad word said about Britney. Mike, might see you all later on. Yeah, have a good one. Yeah, you too. Come in. You wanted to see me? Uh... Yeah, I'm just prepping for a presentation with a clinical commissioning group. Endless fun. Right. <clears throat> I got your email. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know if that was the, the done thing. I just kind of uh, guessed the address. I mean, they're all the same, aren't they? Well, you changed the name, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to explain myself and say... Um... Right. The MCHEM exam is an opportunity for a candidate to demonstrate their breadth of knowledge within emergency medicine. As well as the application of that knowledge to common clinical scenarios, I know, and that's why... Can I finish? Sorry. Now, I understand you're disappointed that I pulled you from sitting the exam early. Yeah, I mean, the thing is... What I didn't appreciate was just how driven you are. So I'm going to reconsider. All right? Doesn't mean I've changed my mind. I want you to prove to me today that you're an F2 worthy of the opportunity. And then we'll talk again later, all right? Thank you. That is, um... Anyway, thank you, really. OK. There's a door on the way out. My first term in med school, this consultant, she came in to talk to us. She said, junior doctors are like children. They run out into the road because they don't know what danger lurks. Because that's the thing, we haven't made mistakes. Not yet. Mistakes that will play on our mind, mistakes that will haunt us for the rest of our lives. That's all we really are. Children running out into the road. Brilliant, thank you. Do you have a today? Who told you? And I think, yeah, drinks will be good. Pub? Salt. Guess what? 
Mrs. Beecham is reconsidering signing off my application for the exam. Good news, isn't it? The best. Teenage boy with Charlie. Um, sorry, Alicia, can you just sign that for me, please? Such warmth and humanity. No, oh, she's all right, deep down. <laughs> right, Alicia, this is Leo, age 14. He was playing outside with his brother and had a bit of a fight with the baby. And lost. Oh, Alicia, I'm one of the doctors here. We were playing football. Josh, please, you should know Leo's in remission. There is some PMH, and this is Mum, Irene, and brother Josh. He had cancer. Josh! So you're playing football and... I tripped. He's been in remission for eight months now. Nearly nine. Oh, that's great news. I'm just going to have a listen to your chest. He's only just started back at school full time. I will bet you've seen your fair share of hospitals. You could say that. Happy birthday. I'm getting Iron Man stuff. Cool. Mum, can we still go bowling? What do you think? Right, so it looks like a couple of subungal hematomas. It's nothing to worry about, just a couple of tiny clots under the nail. We will get an x-ray done, but it doesn't look like anything's broken. Do you have any pain anywhere else? No. Can you listen to my chest? Josh, the doctor's busy. Here, play a game. Could you sort out the x-ray, please, Charlie? Smell the alcohol on him. This president killed itself. Well, better don't than someone else. Idiot. Ten more of morphine, please. Jacob, with me. Firstly, I've been upstairs waiting for those figures. What figures? I asked you to collate some figures for my presentation. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'll get them to you. That's OK. My office is open, so feel free to use the computer. But secondly, why did you not give your patient more pain relief? Well, he's had plenty of his own anaesthetic on board already. No. It's your job to treat a patient as and when they present. It's the job of the courts to decide appropriate punishment. Anything else? No. Okay. I thought I might find you here. Is it nearly home time yet? Uh, no, not quite. I... I just... I want... You tell me to mind my own business. Mind your own business. I just... I wanted to check in. You and Max, your husband. What about us? Just friends? Yeah, no, I got that bit loud and clear. Um... Do, have you signed the divorce papers? No. But... He hasn't asked for them. He's not pushing me for them. So you think that there still might be something there for the two of you? I don't know. We're friends. If that's all you'll offer at the minute, then I'll take it. Do, do friends still wear wedding rings? I don't think he's wearing his. What do you want me to do, Dylan? Throw it away? No, I'm, I'm not suggesting you do anything. I just... I want to see you happy again. And I'm not sure that that's possible while you're seemingly in this sort of limbo. You'll be fine, you know. You will. For you. News, no break, so we'll just relieve the little clots and you should be good to go. Oh, this is Dr. Chow, she's one of our registrars here. Right, and we're all set up. I've never actually defined Neil before, would you mind, Charlie? You ask me, I'm your superior. Oh, sorry. Actually, that's senior, Lily, not superior. Could you talk me through it, Dr. Chow? It's a simple enough process. Slow and steady, please. Mm -hmm. ah, there you go. That did not at all. You must be an old pro by now, eh? Mum, can we go bowling? Josh, can you please just stop being so selfish just for one minute? 
You know, I found this coin earlier, and there's a pretty great vendor machine down the corridor. I could show you it if it's okay with Mum. Yeah. Right then, to the chocolate, young man. <laughs> Yeah, we're fine. Quick, you'd better get it under the cold tap. It's not funny, it really is. Get it under the tap. All right. Only if you meet me at ambulance station on your tea break. See you in ten minutes. Hand dryer in that women's toilets never works. You okay, mate? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I've uh, got a bit of an headache. I might try and get a quick half hour's quiet time for a ball. You all right, Pop? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It'll pass. Just bet me hand on some coffee and all. I don't know. I can't leave you alone for two minutes. Chocolate or crisps? Or both. Thanks. Oh, Louise. Uh, about those drinks tonight. I can't stop, babes. I'm mad. I was going to invite Max as well, if that's all right. He's coming and love to. Oh, cool. How's Lily? I can handle her. Well, if you need anything, let me know, OK? Thanks. What's up? Have you seen Josh anywhere? No, I thought he was with you. Noel, have you seen Josh Stanko? At this high specs? His brother Leo was admitted earlier. Oh, I'm not sure, Alicia. Have you tried outside? No. Thanks. But you're a daddy. Sorry. All oh, right. Right, I get it. Can I just remind you two that this is my office? It's not some cheap hotel. I was just showing reasons. I don't want to know what you were showing. It's just not in here. Right? <laughs> busted. Yeah, busted. <laughs> Do you reckon she's all right? Why wouldn't she be? I don't know. Just after the adoption stuff, she seems a bit... She'll bounce back. Yeah. Just us, then. Yeah. It's just us. Oh, Dixie. What are you doing here? I'm looking for a little boy. Josh, 11, he's gone here war. Well, the only little kid round here is Ian, and he's a bit preoccupied at the moment. Can I do out to out? No, it's fine. I'm sure he'll turn up, thanks. Okay. Josh? <sighs> the way you spoke to Alicia was unprofessional. I'm simply doing my job. No, that's not what you're doing. You're bullying her. I want you to think back to how you felt when you thought Ash was being unnecessarily hard on you. Remember how that felt, both professionally and personally. Don't be that person. That's not you. You're better than that. Dr. Munro is a capable F2. And under my tutelage, she could be an exceptional one. Excuse me. still here. Because I decided they should be here. Leo's complaining of pain. Yeah, in his back and his stomach. Tell the doctor Leo. Pulse is up at 90. BP's OK at 120 over 60. Resp's up a little at 22. Where's Dr. Monroe? She's not here. Leo, can you tell me exactly where it hurts? In my belly. Yeah, I'm just going to have a little look. I 
don't feel anything untoward. I don't think there's anything to be alarmed about, but I'm still going to take some tests. Lofty, can you get some use and ease? LFT, FBC, clock tank and a grip and save. Any time today? No. What's happening? Most likely he's just feeling a little bit nauseous, nothing more. Excuse me. Jacob? Sorry, uh, this arrived for you earlier. Oh, they said it was for you. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. All no, right, fine. Cheers, mate. Oh. Can I get some help? Move out my way. No, please put it down. Somebody, please. No, please put it down. Move. Hey, what's going on? Fine, mate. Get back, no, please. That please is so hard. I need the police. Right, whatever this is, this isn't the way, all right? It's not what you think it is. Shut up. Tell him to shut up. Shut up! Stop! It's all just take a second, OK? We could just talk through this, right? This talk. Ryan! Get him off here now! Come on. Quick! Stop! 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 Be cold. You stay back. You're not helping anybody like this, are you? She's my daughter. I trusted him. In my house. Get out! Get out! I'm gonna kill him! My educational supervisor in med school, he used to say that faith could move mountains, but bring a shovel. <laughs> I never knew what he meant. Until today. Get him out of there! How are you getting on with those numbers? It's on the list. Hyper-resonant. Resonant. Oh, please, please don't do this. Oh, I think. We should think. Yeah. Chest decompression with needle thoracostomy. Please. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh. In the second and third rib space, mid clavicular line. Okay. Get him out. Get him. And if my day had ended there, well, who knows? It could have all been very different. Because I had done my job, I had saved a life. He should be feeling better, not worse. I want the other doctor. Lofty, can you put a call out for Dr. Munro, please? All right, nice and easy. He's doing very well. His heart rate's up. I want to go home. Can I have another feel of your abdomen, please? You've already done that. I want the nice doctor back. Yeah, I think we all do. You fell when you were playing football? Leo? No. What do you mean, no? We were climbing in the tree. I fell out. That's the first I've heard of this. He's Dr Monroe's patient. You fell out? I've told you not to go anywhere near that tree. 
He's our responsibility at the moment. How tall is this tree? Ten foot. Maybe taller, I don't know. Any pain here? There. Charlie, a moment. What is it? Just give us a moment, please. Call the lab and cross-match four units of blood on the group and save. What are you thinking? I don't really know yet. Abdomen is tender in the upper right quadrant, and we'll need a fast scan. And where the hell is Dr. Monroe? All right, mate. You're all right. Dad? What have you done? Get in the truck. No! I said get in the truck. I'm staying here! You're 16 years old. 16! If your mother could see you now. No, well, she can't, can she? Dad, please, I love him! Take off in the van, send Alicia to me now! Sarah, turn up! Right. What's the name? Sarah. Okay, Sarah, can you hear me, darling? Right, stay nice, let's go for us. There you go. Right, she's breathing. The air is clear, she's got a pulse. No, have you seen Dr. Monroe? Um, not since this morning, why? Anything wrong? Let me see, okay? Tell her I'm looking for her. Okay. I'll have to have a word with Rita, see if she could give you a couple of days off, get your head together. Why do I need to get my head together? Because it's buried in the sand. I need you both in resource. Control's just called ahead. Something's happened at the ambulance station. What do you mean? I don't know. They just said two critically injured. Robin, with me. We need to get him immobilised. Can I get a colour and board, please? Uh, How's he doing, Rita? He's not good, Ian. Uh, I didn't mean to. Okay, there's crepitus around the pelvis. We need to get a pelvic splint on her now. Right. Pelvic splint, please! Look, I don't want you to panic. What now? But there's still no sign of Alicia or Josh. Apparently, there was an incident at the ambulance station, and Alicia was there. I don't have the details. Where's the boy? Well, once again... Go and find out, please, Charlie. Josh was in her care. If something has happened to him... I'm sure he'll be fine. Were you just talking about Josh? Where is he? Hi, this is Sarah Chester, 16-year-old female. She's just been hit by a car and run over. Her pelvis is clinically fractured with soft tissue damage to her thigh. She's here 10, pulse 100, rest for 30, BP 100 over 50. Sarah, please. Three. Two, three. He absolutely can't be here. Her belly's more distended than when we picked her up. She's my daughter. Hi, that's Lawrence. He was the driver. All right, someone get into the relative's room, please. You slept with her. She's 16 years old. 16! Look, we'll come and talk to you as soon as you know anything, all right? Oh, Resource 2, please. He was here! You need to stand back. Stay there. Don't make this any worse than it already is, mate. He did this to her. Get him out! Nathan Flint! His name is Nathan okay. Flint! Okay, let's get a second line in, hang some own legs straight away. To activate the major hemorrhage protocol. Robin, close, please. All right. Let's see if you know we're on our way. Okay, she's tolerating the Goodell. We need to protect the airway. Mm. Right, let's prep for an RSI. Go and get cleaned up. Come back down. That pen can't be sterile, can it? I wouldn't have thought so, no. It's a significant respiratory compromise. Let's set up for a chest drain. 
That's exactly what we're going to try and do, okay? Try and stay calm for me. What the hell happened out there? Oh, I guess it's as good as mine. Cheating. And flip cuff. Position good. Okay, quite cut off. Secure the tube. Look at this. Increasing the distended abdomen. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I just had a message. Uh, CT ready for you. Okay, thank you. Do you want to notify the father? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. It's funny the things you remember from med school. The little earworms that go round and round. Common things are common. You're born to it. It's a labour of love. You never forget your first death. The other guy, what did he do? <laughs> he was meant to be her tutor. The teachers, they, they reckon she's definitely good enough for uni. So, here am I, working all the hours God sends to pay for a tutor, to pay him. Did he? I came home early from a job and he was... Fasken will allow me to see inside your abdomen. Is that okay? This is going to be a little bit cold. This is ridiculous. We need to call the police. I've already informed the police. What if someone snatched him? Look, we're doing everything we can. We're making every effort to contact Dr. Munro. I'm sure Josh is going to be fine. Please go and find my boy. I'll check back in with security. Looks like there's some free fluid. Free fluid? What does that mean? Is that bad? I'm going to call down one of the paediatric surgeons who will assess him before we take him up to theatre. What? Now? I believe Leo might be bleeding internally. I'd ask you not to panic, but we have to move quickly. Mum, I'm scared. Don't worry, son. You're going to be fine. Poor guy. What is she doing there? Here you are. What do you think you've been playing at? Where's Josh? Um, uh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Do you realize Leo's on his way up to theater because of you? Why? A child who suffered a trauma and has a history of cancer, you should have ran from her blood and done clotting, you stupid, incompetent girl. Hey, what's going on? Sorry, Mr. Speecham, I can no longer work with Dr. Munro. Well, out, both of you. In my office, now. Out! Come on, Josh. Pick up. He's gone to answer phone. Josh, where are you? I love you, son. You're not in any trouble at all. Please, just come back. Thank you. It's all right. Where is he? Do you have one of those find your phone apps? I've got a cloud thing. 
Perfect. Okay. So we're on top of the chest issues. We're just going to wait for the author to come and have a look. Can I see her? Who the girl? Her name's Sarah. How do you know her? It's not what you think. I waited. I didn't touch her. She's 16. But you're her teacher. Her tutor. She's still 16. Exactly. I've done nothing wrong. In the eyes of the law, you've done nothing wrong. She not. Her BP's fading. No, I've lost it. She's throwing off some VEs. She's lost her apple. Another milligram of adrenaline. Let's go again. Come on, sir. Come on. I think that's a cow. You can see its legs and its head. You don't play this game. No, because I'm not a kid. Not fair enough. Sometimes I wish I had cancer. You get loads of new stuff, and people love you. Mum doesn't even notice me. No, I, th I think she's really worried about you. Do you know how I know? Because I've got psychic powers. You don't have psychic powers. How much you want to bet? You like the Avenger films? Everyone likes the Avenger films. Your favourite's Iron Man. That's everyone's favourite. And your brother's is Captain America. You guessed. If, if you really think that she doesn't care... She always blames me for everything. Well, sometimes... Sometimes it's easier. You're the healthier kid. And sometimes people think that... The healthier kid can cope with more responsibility. It's okay to get scared as well. It's normal. Even I get scared. What? Of your hair? <laughs> it's all right to get a bit upset as well. I'm jealous. We all do. But what you need to know is that she loves you very, very much, okay? It's got horns and udders.
I really think this is futile. We keep going. Jacob, she's been in PEA and now is sisterly with no response to aggressive resuscitation for the last 30 minutes. I think we should stop. Look, she's only 16. We keep going. Okay. Two sugars. This isn't happening. It really isn't. I didn't mean to be so... with Josh, you know. I failed him. No, you haven't. It's all been about Leo. Yes, of course it has. When a child has cancer, it puts an incredible strain on the family. It happens in every case. He hasn't been ill for eight months now. I'm still a mess. That's perfectly normal. I had to put Leo first, you know? I had to. Yes, I know. Mum. Josh! Oh, God. Been a bit of adventure, haven't you, Josh? Are you mad at me? Oh, of course I'm not, son. I love you. I love you so much. The injury was superficial to the hand. Except it wasn't. You failed to ask the adequate questions, and now the boy pays the price of your incompetence. Pulse check. No change. We can't get her to theatre without a pulse. All right, I'm going to call it. Time of death, 16.15. Okay. Thank you, both of you. Okay. I need to go and speak to the police and somehow. Let me do it. Let me speak to the father. Thank you. I was looking for a patient, a brother of a patient. He went missing. What on earth were you doing that for? Dr. Munro took it upon herself to take the boy to the vending machine. I, I just don't understand. You're not the only one. But that's enough. Well, there is no doubt you did an excellent job in a very dangerous situation. What I can't fathom is why you put yourself in harm's way in the first place. And this is after missing a potentially fatal bleed. I'm sorry. You leave me no choice. I have to launch a formal investigation into what happened today. Well, written reports on my desk by the end of the day. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, Miss Beecham. Dr. Chow. Yes, Miss Beecham. Right, get out of my sight. And Dr. Munro, forget about the exam. You want to tell me what's going on? The 
the name of the officer that shot me. Where did you get this? Does it matter? They haven't opened it. Not yet. You open this, you ruin your life, you know that. He can't just get away with it. He can. He can and he has. It's just a terrible mistake. We need to accept it. Accept it? Accept it. You were the wrong man in the wrong place at the wrong time. No! No. No, I was the wrong black man in the wrong place at the wrong time. No, that's simply not true. So what? So if I was a white man, if I was Charlie, what, then they'd just shoot first and ask questions later? Yes. And you're wrong. You're wrong. And he needs to be punished. What, the way Nathan Flynn needed to be punished? Hmm? A man lost his daughter today because he couldn't control himself. That was different. You open that envelope, you ruin your life, your career. And maybe that's what I want. How about that? Do it. You go ahead and open it. Condemn yourself. I hear you and Alicia were in with Connie. You okay? Anything I can do? I don't know which one to choose. It's for my father. But look, he's coming. Have you got any comment, Mr. Appleby? It's a labour of love, hard work and long hours, but certain patients will make it all worthwhile. That's what they told me in med school, and that's what I believe. And if all I had to contend with were the patients, then perhaps I could have muddled through. Truth is, I should have spoken up earlier. Babes, it's me. Where are you? Look, give me a call back when you get this, please. No, she's not answering. You can join us if you want. No, I've got a hot date with a bubble bath. Her very 90s. Right, come on. Let's wait for it at the bar. That doesn't mean I'm buying the first round. You never do. <laughs> I 
I realized fairly early on that Dr. Lily Chow hailed from the school of tough love. So I bit my tongue at first. I believed I could cope. The pressure she piled on, I thought I could thrive on it. The truth is, I can't. Dr. Chow has not made life easy during my time here. In fact, she's made it harder than it needed to be. And now, because of her, my position has become untenable. Bottom line, I've been bullied out of a job that I love. There is, however, no doubt that Dr. Chow is a gifted physician. And despite our very real and obvious differences, I can but wish her well. An airway? Airway is clear. That being said, I hereby give notice of my resignation with immediate effect. Yours sincerely, Dr. Alicia Munro. Good. Nice and slowly, no rush. Good. My name is Dr. Chow. Can you talk? Yeah. Good. I'm just going to have to listen to your chest, all right? 